Hi guys, I'm Tim Barham. I'll spell my last name B-A-R-H-A-M, like the street. You've all seen it. I'm famous. I know. I'm kidding. I'm really sassy, so I apologize. And it's late. You're my third group, so you get the full show. Yay! Yay! You thought last group was worse. No, it's the best group. All right, so uh, I've been doing Not Scary Farm for 20 years. This is my 20 years of doing it. Um, I'm very proud of the fact that I've never missed a night of haunt. That's a lot of nights. I've also never missed a night of laundry. If you look down this way, you'll see all of our costumes. With that laundry comes a lot of smell and time and responsibility. Uh, I have a team of 12 people that do laundry for eight hours. So you thought a couple of your loads and folding was a rough night? Eight hours with 12 people doing laundry. We literally tow to a local laundromat, they close half of it down, and we start doing laundry. It takes us 500 dryers. It's a crazy amount of dryers. How often? We do it once a week. So we do laundry once a week, five hour, or 500 dryers. It takes us four hours at the laundromat. Then we come back here for four hours and we spend putting it away. We have three teams of four. Two of them are literally taking the costume out of the bag, putting it on a hanger. The other two are literally taking those costumes and putting them on their rack. We have people that work for four hours doing that. How we have that system is if you look over here, everything's coded. How we came up with that is when I started, everything was by a name. So the talent would come up and they'd say, I'm Tony. And I'd go, Tony, okay. And I'd go through the rack and I'd find Tony. Well, if there were four Tonys, it was a nightmare because I'd be like, is it this one? No, no. This one? It was a very slow process for us. Again, 20 years ago, we didn't have that many. As we started to grow and develop, we had to figure out a system because having names was not working. So we came up with numbers. You guys just got done having a maze walkthrough where you saw the talent line up in those numbers, correct? They said, all right, one through 40, basically. That number corresponds to the costume. That costume corresponds back to the maze of what kind of scare that's gonna be and what that person's doing in the maze. So for knots, we have a couple kinds of scares that we do. We have a blend-in scare where that talent matches the wall, right? So that talent needs to look like the wall. How do I know that? From that talent number. So everything kind of coordinates back from the design into the wardrobe aspect of it. So those numbers represent where they stand in the maze. That number also represents how I put them logged on a rack and how I get them in and out of here. When I first started, it used to take almost three, sometimes four hours at the end of the night to get everybody checked in and out the door. We do it in two hours. A thousand people in the door and out in two hours. Just by changing the system on how we do it. Love our monsters, God bless them. Not all of them can read a number. So we color coded it. We said, all right, look for your color. And it's so cute. We'll see that first new monster and they're holding their card and they're walking down. They're like, green, green, green. And they're all excited. And I give them their costume for the first time and to watch those guys light up, that monster I know will be here for the next 15 years. They get so excited for that costume. And what excites me is for the last six months that I've been working with those costumes, I get to see it come to life. So for us, I'll talk about the fact that the design team started working last year on costume concepts and maze concepts. We jumped in with them. And we started looking at what costumes worked last year, what costumes didn't work, and how we can improve this year when we come into them. So all of our existing mazes, we look at freshly every year and we say, just because it's returning doesn't mean we want to just leave it as is. We want to freshen it up. So if something was working, we're like, how can we make it better? If it wasn't working, what can we do to make this a better costume for a better scare? So we started last year. With our new concepts and our new designs, it took us three months just to start dealing with costumes, making silhouette choices, making fabric choices. So we had about a three month process of designing costume to getting into actually building it. Then it takes us about three to four months of actual sewing to get costumes ready for our opening night. So it's about a seven month process. That's a huge amount of time to get from design to walk out the door. We're really proud of that process, but it's a long and hard process for a lot of us to get to. Any questions at this point? Yes? How many, like, is there just, you just know when someone didn't show up for work that night, you're like, oh, these costumes did not go out. Correct. I can tell on the rack how full the maze is. Yeah. Easily by just a quick glance, I know who's gone out and who's not. 
Um, so that's an easy sight for me. It's also an easy sight for our talent captains. They can walk in and they're like, okay, I know how many I'm missing. They know what they can do so they can shift people around. It's a quick visual for us. Also, at the end of the night, it also tells us if we, um, our cards are all in, then we know all of our talent has been turned in. So with that, you see we have about a thousand monsters out there. Each person has a pair of pants, a shirt, a jacket, maybe a wig. So we're dealing with like 4,000, 5,000 pieces of goods. Again, coming in and out every night, going to a laundromat, traveling. So it's a lot of units, a lot of things to keep um, track of. I'm very fortunate, I have a very strong team. I have a staff of 24 people. Some of them have been with me for 30 years. So I'm very fortunate to walk in with an amazing team that's been doing Honk for a very long time. Some of the things that we do when we're designing, we think about the longevity of the costume. Again, I'm really fortunate. I get to just drive downtown LA and go fabric shopping. Our sister parks are like, where do you get all these fabric? I'm like, don't you get in the car and drive? And they're like, drive where? For the next six hours to hopefully get somewhere? So I'm fortunate. I literally go downtown and I look for fabric that's going to be durable. I literally take a scratch board and I'm rubbing the fabric to see if it's going to survive. I'm giving it a stress test. I want to find out if it's going to survive on. Um, it's a challenge out there for our costumes. Our monsters are amazing. They are working their butts off for eight hours up there tearing it up to scare. I make sure that they're going to survive in those costumes. We double layer a lot of our fabric. Like for our sliders, a lot of their pants we'll put on the lower level, which is dragging on the ground, and we'll put a second layer there. We'll also reinforce the high level on where their pads are. For um, a lot of our monsters who are being really active and are crouching a lot, we'll double stitch the crotch seam so it doesn't blow out on them so they don't have to come back here. Um, one of the other things that when I first started working on, all of our customers were getting like all these weird tears on their shoulders and I was like, what the heck are they doing? What is a how does a monster get their back all scratched? Then I went out in the maze and I watched a monster try to get through a maze without touching our guests. So they were dragging along the wall and I was like, oh, there it is. So now a lot of our customers will be reinforce the back side of the shoulders because that's what's dragging them against the wall. So that survives and helps our costume last longer. Again, we can get a costume to last about two and a half to three years. Do you guys all remember Doll Factory? Yeah. Y'all around for Doll Factory? One of my all-time favorite mazes. It was around for six years. Third year we're into it and I'm like, is it staying? Is it going? What are we doing? And they're like, well, why are you so concerned? I said, the costumes are falling apart. I have to make a choice. So even though it was a, a returning maze, we had to build it from the ground up and start over. With our new mazes, we start fresh. There's not a great catalog where I just flip through and I'm like, oh, six zombies, that'll be great, I'll take those. I have to start from the ground up and I build everything fresh and new every year. So again, I don't have a magic catalog for clowns. Um, one of the things that was really exciting for us is when we started over working on Boardwalk, we had all these big rides, and they're like, how are you going to compete? Crowns are bright, and they're colorful. How do you compete with a giant green and purple coaster? And I'm like, I can't. How can we figure out a way to make Boardwalk make sense? So we actually started looking, and I was like, you know what would be really cool is if we do it a sepia tone. Like, we do it all old school clowns. You know, great, those old great photos that I started looking at on the Boardwalk and all that, and I was like, oh my god, this is great. Let's take the costumes in that direction. So if you notice, everything in our boardwalk area, all of our clowns are all in brown tones, sepia tones, and they're in a plaid. The only color pop that I did was red socks, red suspenders, and red hair. Which now the color, when you walk through and you see the clowns, that red pops, I'm not fighting a giant coaster, because I'm not trying to compete with that color. It actually, by being more simple with color, actually made it a bigger impact on those costumes. So that was one of those techniques. A lot of our costumes we like to do is we want to give your palette a flavor. Just like when we're eating, we want to have different senses being censored and having different flavors. We want to do that with your eyes with the costumes. We want to censor your palate so you're feeling full. So if you go from one maze to the next, it doesn't feel like you've just had that. You know, you can only eat peanut butter jelly so long, right? Then you want some nice wine and you want a little cracker and you want some cheese. And each maze we look at and we want to do that with so you have a flavor when you're going from maze to maze. We also do something here in wardrobe that we call a form and function. Two very, very important things that we really design from. If we have this amazing idea on paper, tentacle with nine arms, six heads, and a big thing on stilts, well, it's a great picture. Is it practical? Not really. <laughs> Is it going to work in a maze? 
Never. Is the talent going to be able to manage it? Not going to happen. So we have to bring the practical in and go, okay, how can we make this real? If it's all function where they're just wearing pants, shirt, and a mask, and they're like, oh, scary. It's not very flavorful. It's nothing for our palate. So we have to bring form and function together so we get a lot of style and design, but also functionality so it'll survive and be able to do its thing in the woods. Anybody have any questions? Ta da! <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Again, we've been working on some of our mazes. We've literally been working for about four months. Uh, Voodoo. Voodoo has so much intricate detail. We did a lot of, we worked with um, looking at some of the history of Voodoo, Voodoo, and they do a lot of bleaching. So it was a lot of part of that technique of how you get that costume to get old and dirty. But that's a part of the history of Voodoo is bleaching. So we did a lot of bleaching. We also did a lot of braiding. We did a lot of stress, distressing. So some of the stuff that we've been working literally on about five months. Voodoo has been the most intense we've ever done because we're looking at that as a different maze. It's kind of a hybrid for us. It's not a zone and it's not a maze, it's a combination. So we wanted our talent to have that level. Most of our mazes, we don't have to worry about a 360 degree. In our zones, there's nothing behind them. Guests are all the way around, so we design all the way around. In our mazes, we really do a lot of presentation because that's all you're seeing. You're seeing only the front. Voodoo, it's both. <laughs> so we had to look at a lot of the costuming completely different for us for our maze. So we went into a lot of detail to really give you that deep voodoo back New Orleans feel. Any, yeah, question? What's your, what is the one costume that you're like, most excited about? My yeah. uh, favorite. This year? Well, it was actually two years ago. My most favorite costume is the Green Witch. Um, that costume I got to actually um, build from the ground up with Brooke. When they, we started talking about the Green Witch, they brought a bunch of pictures to me and I, I, had a, I, I really want to just, I understand her. I really want to make her come alive. And I, that's my, my favorite costume I've ever done here. Um, it has a little bit of period, which I love. It has a lot of flash. It has, it's seductive. It's strong and it has that real presence. This is my favorite costume. Did you know, see some of the wigs. Did you know a guy was gonna play wigs? Had no idea. When we originally made that, we had no idea where the concept of how big the Green Witch was gonna go. Um, we knew we were doing a maze. We didn't know we were doing tricksters. We didn't know that it was gonna take to the level that it was. It was just a concept and it was very exciting to be a part of that. That's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite costumes. Any other questions? Yes. So how much influence does Not Scary Far have with other Cedar Fair parks, like The Witch, for instance, is gonna be at Cedar Point. So how does that work? Is that just coincidence, or are you uh, Maybe. maybe. Um, <laughs> they are our sister parks. They do take a lot of what we do. Of, of course, we're not Scary Farm. We're the, the first, we're the biggest, we're the largest. We have started an industry to grow from here. A lot of what we do that we come up with travels to other areas. Our sister parks and other companies. There's a lot of things that do. Uh, we had a costume that showed up in a major company when we did Steampunk Vampires. It hadn't been done yet. The very next year, Paper Magic and Ruby's catalog came out with an insert catalog, three pages of Steampunk Vampires, in the same color palette that we did here at Knott's. Coincidence? <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. Another thing that happened is, in the dance show, um, the Ed Alonzo show, Five years ago, we had a candy corn costume. Never been heard of. I'd never seen it anywhere. It was a, a concept that the designer and I sat down and we're working on and we're like, oh, a cute little skirt with the candy corn. I'll take eight of them and I'll do a little skirt. We'll do a little candy corn top. The very next year, Morris had one in an insert. And I was like, what? So that's exciting for us here at Knott's because we know the company industry is coming here to see what we're doing new to put out there. So that's really exciting. Our sister parks get a lot of that information. We do give them a lot of help. We're very fortunate, we're year round. They are not a year round park. They do not have a year round staff. So they are coming to us and saying, hey, what ideas do you have? What can you help us with? And we, we actually literally, for me, I actually boxed up costumes and sent it up to Great America to help their team out. Any other questions you guys have? 
Thank you guys. You're now going to go back and um, meet with Bill. He's going to talk to you guys about the makeup side of our um, department. And he'll be back there and you can take all photos on your way as you head down. Thank you.